Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the classic rock band, Yes. According to Steve Howe, they're putting out a new album at some point, I guess, or if maybe they even put it out already. I don't know. I'm just, you know, saying what's on their website. So Steve Howe says this. Much of the music was written in late 2019, with the rest in 2020. We commissioned several orchestrations to augment and enhance the overall sound of these fresh new recordings, hoping that our emphasis on melody, coupled with some expansive instrumental solo breaks, keeps up the momentum for our listeners. And this is according to Steve Howe on the website YesWorld.com, the official website of classic prog rock band Yes. Okay, so we're going to get into the history of Yes, okay? Yes, okay? So after seeing an early King Crimson gig in 1969, Yes decided to go in a more technical, progressive direction, and they released their first long play album simply titled Yes. Though their lineup has changed many times times throughout the years, including an incarnation often called ARW, or Anderson Rabin Wakeman, they have managed to maintain a solid fan base and have entered Progressive Rock's pantheon, so to speak. In 1971, under what might be called the classic Wakeman and Howe years, the band released their first hit single, Roundabout, which was, produ- which was produced by the band and Eddie Offord, Or, Eddie Oford, don't know how that's pronounced, might be Offord, might be Oford, I don't know. But, you know, he did help produce the album. Anyway, uh, Roundabout is known for its driving bass line. The track also highlights the typical stylings of singer and guitarist John Anderson. The album contains songs in the pop slash rock and progressive rock styles, with Roundabout certainly being the heaviest of the tracks uh, from that particular collection. Um, The band's sixth album, Tales from Topographic Oceans, is considered to be one of their most divisive, divisive releases. Nevertheless, for some, it's still one of the most celebrated albums of the 1970s. Imagine that. 1970s, a lot of albums were being celebrated back then. So for Yes to be among them, it's notable. It's notable. Yes's other controversial album might be 1983's 90125. It's considered a departure from Fragile as more of a pop-oriented album. Basically, it pushed the band away from a decidedly more experimental, avant-garde, and classical territory. But there's sometimes unusual vocal and instrumental arrangements. Uh, in this case, though, it uh, all that was taking a back seat to conventional pop dynamics, or maybe lack of dynamics, if one wishes to be snooty about it. Anyway, 90125, not to be confused with 90210, but 90125 is noted for featuring the hit single, Owner of a Lonely Heart. Um which enjoyed commercial success, but divided fans. you got to have them divided a little bit. You know, you can't have universal acclaim throughout the entire band's run. I mean, what what would that mean? You know, I mean, they're lemmings or sheep or uh, some type of unlikable, unlovable animal. Um, let's see. Uh, where was it? Okay, yes. However, it could be seen partly as just another phase in the band's career, as their album Relayer was more of a jazz fusion effort. You got that jazz fusion. Their 1986 album Big Generator was actually their 12th one, definitely suggesting a prolific band. Now, in case you don't have a dictionary or a thesaurus present and handy, prolific means they put out a lot of stuff, made a lot of music in this case. The band, of course, is not solely known as a unit, but for its individual 
musicians. For example, guitarist Steve Howe has some solo acoustic tracks that might pop up on a Spotify or Pandora auto-generated playlist, or maybe Amazon if you have that as well, you know. Um, he's known for some solo acoustic tracks. Basically, there's a lot of stylistically diverse musicianship to choose from between individual albums, singles, any box sets they threw out, some live performances, you know, live recordings and studio albums and blah, 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 you know. Maybe they could, you know, uh, send you an Instagram of a unique track especially made for you. I don't know. Many of their albums also have one-word titles like Talk, Drama, which is perhaps their heaviest album, with the song Machine Messiah featuring heavy, almost Sabbath-like riffs, possibly with more elements of dissonance than they're typically known for. So the band continues to perform occasional concerts to date, and as noted, they appear to have new plans, future plans. They're broadening the horizons ever still. You know, they, they never, they're never completely done. The, the chapters will go on. They're not going to slam this book shut yet on yes. It's going to keep on expanding and blooming like a, like a goddarn flower um, of progressive rock. They're going to germinate and pollinate and do all that fun stuff with their uh, prog rock ideas. And uh, you can't stop them. You know, you can try. You can try. But they're just going to keep doing what they do. So anyway, uh, if you're concerned about this kind of thing, Yes has won a Grammy Award while being nominated five times. So they're not complete stinkers as far as award goes. awards go. I mean... Uh, they got one Grammy. That's not too shabby, you know. It's more than I've got. Probably more than your dumbass has got. So, yeah. That's all I want to talk about regarding Yes. And, uh, you know, you can leave a message in the comments. I don't really care. Uh, go ahead. Make my day, punk.